Okay, this is the graph that made me decide to quit my job as a science teacher. This is the graph that shows the jump in my heart rate when I said I was quitting. And this is the graph that made me decide to try doing YouTube full time. But before any of those graphs can make any real sense, we need to rewind. Rewind back to high school, back to when I hated science. All right, enjoy the ride. It's March 31st, 2007. I start taking a picture of myself every day. It's an art project. I have no interest in science. It seems like a big and boring list of unrelated facts. I graduate from high school and move from the farm to Toronto to study media in university. I want to film movies about dreams. I want to make music videos. I want to entertain people. I'm 17. I'm bored and I'm frustrated by my classes because everything I'm learning is just theories based on other people's theories and it all feels like meaningless hearsay and I decide to leave. I move to Waterloo to start my second year at a different university in communication studies. It's not long before I'm feeling bored here too and I start thinking that maybe despite that I love to learn, maybe university just isn't for me. I'm learning more from things like YouTube than from my professors, so I decide to just do one more year and graduate in general arts. My brother recommends a book about genetics. It's called The Selfish Gene, and I'm fascinated. I decide to take an introductory biology course just for fun. I haven't taken a science class since grade 10, and I am stunned by the scientific method. I mean, for the first time, I realize that science is a process. It's a way of exploring. It's not a, a list of facts. I am hooked, and I decide to fast track through a science degree. For the first time, university feels right. I stop taking daily photos. It's pretentious and narcissistic, and who knows if I'll ever make another artistic film anyway. I graduate with a biology degree. I move to Vancouver. I'm finishing up a master's of science. Four years have gone by. I now think that data is beautiful, and so I collect it. My phone tracks what songs I listen to, I log my mood every day with an app, I journal my activities, I get a watch that tracks my steps and my heart rate, the list goes on. I want to use statistics to figure out how to live a happier, healthier life. On an average day, I fall asleep at 11.02 p.m. and I wake up at 6.44 a.m. I'm restless or awake for about an hour through the course of the night, so overall, I sleep about a half hour less than the average person. But I catnap three days a week. That's what the hammock's for. I spend five hours a day on my computer, including 67 minutes on entertainment sites like YouTube, another 67 doing creative work, 46 on social networks, 32 on things like email, and another 90 minutes on everything else. I listen to 47 songs a day. I read 1.7 books a month. I walk about 8 kilometers a day, which is 3 kilometers more than the average American. I burn 2,871 calories a day, which is equivalent to this much olive oil, though I promise my diet is more diverse than that. On average, I drink 0.6 beers a day, which is an example of why averages can be silly things. Most days I drink zero beers, sometimes one, rarely more than one. I'm drinking less and less over time, and that's not an accident. See, I started to suspect that maybe more beer doesn't make me more happy, and so I looked at my data. And I couldn't find anything in my data that suggests that drinking more beer really does make me any happier, so now I barely drink. On a scale from 1 to 5, my average mood is 3.85, which is good. Doing this means that every day I reflect on how I'm feeling, and that self-awareness has been game-changing for me. Mondays are meh, but my week gets better up until Sunday, which is totally the best day of the week. I'm a tiny bit less happy on days when it rains a lot, and I'm much less happy on days when it snows. I'm happier on days when I run, even happier on days when I bike, still even more happy on days when I go rock climbing, and I basically max out my happiness on days that I dance, compared to days when I don't do those things. Though it's hard to say if I'm dancing because I'm already happy, or if dancing makes me happier. But either way, it's one more excuse to dance. I'm happier on days that I spend with my friends, though that's probably something I didn't need statistics for. Okay, now let's look at those first three graphs again. 
It's February 1st, 2017. I'm a science teacher working with gifted and special needs children. It is a stressful job and I think it might be making me depressed. I look at my data for the days that I teach compared with the days that I don't teach and I find a bigger difference in my mood than I've seen with any other factor. I realize that I need to change something. It's June 7th. I decide to quit teaching and go do educational videography for universities. This is a big, exciting moment for me, and my heart rate jumps when I tell HR I'm leaving. It's June 22nd. After three years of making these science videos on YouTube, I watch as my viewership suddenly does this, and I decide to try doing YouTube full-time for at least a year, because hey, I mean, you only live once. It's August 16th, 2017. I start taking daily photos again. It's for art and it's for science. I think that data and systems of logic can help us answer questions about the universe, but it can also be a way of seeing the world that improves our day-to-day -day lives. It certainly has for me. Today is May 24th, 2018. When I started this YouTube channel three years ago, I named it The Scope of Science, and I really wasn't sure, honestly, what I wanted it to be. But making this video has reminded me that science is a personal voyage, uh, at least for me, and it's one that I want to explore in creative ways. And that's why as of today, I am no longer calling this channel The Scope of Science, because really, it's just me making these videos here. And my name is Curtis Bowdy, and from now on I'm going to be calling my channel that, Curtis Bowdy. I'm also starting a Patreon page, launching today, so please go check that out if you want to support what I do and help me share my passion for science with others. And if you don't think you can support it, you should still check it out because I made some pretty bizarre and fun rewards on there that are kind of cool to check out. If you're new here, I should also introduce you to your friend and cactus, Sir Stabbington. By subscribing to my channel, this machine automatically makes a single drop of water fall onto him. That's all that's keeping him alive. Lastly, thanks to Daniel for playing a bunch of instruments for this video, and thank you for watching.